Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Donovan and today I'm excited to share with you my full review of this budget beast from UmiDigi. This is the UmiDigi A3 Pro and I would argue that UmiDigi is a uh, up and coming budget friendly device company. They've got a lot of awesome options available including one that I'm going to be reviewing very soon, the UmiDigi One Max and the UmiDigi F1 which is a super exciting device um, that you can get for under $200. It's an absolute budget beast. But let's go ahead and talk about this guy right here. This is the UmiDigi A3 Pro and as you can see you can pick it up right now for under $100 at GearBest.com and a quick shout out to GearBest.com. They are the sponsor for this video and also notice that I have two of them sitting here and that's because I'm going to be giving one away courtesy of the folks at GearBest.com. So let's go ahead and run through the specs here real quick. So we have a MediaTek 6739 uh, quad core processor clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. We have stock Android 8.1 Oreo software running in the background. We have 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage. As far as the SIM goes, we have dual nano SIM, or you can run one SIM and a TF card, which is also the same thing as a micro SD card, so it is expandable. We have a 3300 milliamp hour battery, a 5.7 inch uh, HD plus display, so that's 720p, um, and you can see obviously it has that notch. Um, there. Um, so 5.7 inch HD display, 12 and 5 megapixel cameras on the rear, 8 megapixel camera up front, and then you can see all of the LTE uh, bands that it supports. So uh, just as a quick heads up, this does work on both Verizon, um, also on T-Mobile. Those are the two that I tested it with, but it will also work uh, very well with AT&T as well. I didn't test it out on Sprint, um, but my assumption is that typically a lot of these phones, unless they specifically get Sprint's approval, they won't work on Sprint. So as far as the phone goes, this is definitely a budget B. All right, so I want to go ahead and start off this review by talking about one thing that really sets this phone apart from so many other devices at this price point, and that is the design. So there's no question that this phone goes out of its way to look a whole lot like this device right over here. This is the iPhone XS Max. This one is obviously more similarly sized to the XS or the regular 10, um, but no question that uh, UmiDigi went out of their way to make a phone that looks very similar in terms of design of the iPhone. So that uh, starts off with the notch. So if we go up here, you can see obviously it has similar uh, notch, kind of like what you get with the iPhone. Now the iPhone does have a full screen display, whereas down here, on the UmiDigi A3 Pro, we have uh, a pretty significant bezel down here at the bottom. Um, but then on the sides, obviously we have kind of that silver look, whereas over here we have aluminum. On the iPhone, we have stainless steel, so a little bit more high quality material there. Um, but we have that glass back that's very similar design. I mean, you really wouldn't be able to tell the difference in terms of the glass backs on the two. At least I can't tell the difference. Um, we have our dual camera design, just like you have over here. Over here on the iPhone, we have the flash in the middle where on the UmiDigi we have it just below the cameras. Um, one thing that sets this one apart though, we do have a headphone jack, so that's a nice little addition here. We have micro USB for charging it, so definitely not lightning or type C, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Type C would be nice, but again, we're talking about a $100 phone here. Then we have a speaker at the bottom. Uh, no speaker up here at the top, that's just an earpiece. And then we have our camera up here on the front, and again, those dual cameras on the back. Um, but in terms of design, this phone is definitely one I think that sets it itself apart from other phones at this price point. So definitely a huge thumbs up to UmiDigi on the design of the A3 Pro. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the performance of the UmiDigi A3 Pro. And you can see here that uh, in terms of a Geekbench 4 score, we have a single core score of 659 and a multi-core score of 1778. Again, this is running 3 gigs of RAM, that MediaTek 6739 processor, um, and that's clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. So I actually have a watch um, called the Cospet Hope that has actually the exact same processor that you see here on the UmiDigi A3 Pro. And that is to say that basically this phone... Uh, uh, in general, it's going to run most day-to-day -day tasks pretty well. There's definitely going to be some lag, especially with something like uh, Facebook Messenger, kind of a slower app in general anyways. Um, but in terms of gaming, I did actually do a full video where I went through a bunch of these games that you can see here. Um, but one of the heavier games like PUBG, it definitely does not uh, do a great job of running games like that. But games that are more simple like Subway Surfer, NBA Jam, the Star Wars Force Arena, again, that one did not run super well. Um, in 
the common thread here is that online gaming uh, tends to not work super well, um, but anything that's just kind of like a game that's built into the system of the phone, uh, those games ran really well, like this Mighty Micros game, NBA Jam, Subway Surfer, all those games ran pretty well. In general, day-to-day um, -day tasks like Facebook and Twitter, uh, running Netflix, all those will work just fine, but it's any of the heavier tasks that are going to use up a lot more RAM where you'll find some of the stutters with the UmiDigi A3 Pro. But overall, I definitely think it's a very usable phone, especially for one at a $100 price point. And certainly, uh, if it's going to be purchased as a backup phone or for someone who uh, maybe it's their first phone, I definitely think that uh, this thing will handle most of the daily tasks that uh, those individuals will use. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about battery life on the UmiDigi A3 Pro. And again, this is carrying a 3300 milliamp hour battery that is non-removable. So of course you can't remove this back glass. Um, but in terms of day-to-day -day use, what I've found is that about four and a half hours to six hours of screen on time is typically what I'm getting. So for me, what that means is that if I pull it off a charger in the morning, uh, typically I'm gonna get through a full day with about 20 to 30% of battery life left. Now, if you play a lot of games on it, like if you're trying to do PUBG on it, which I don't recommend, um, but if you're playing like things like NBA Jam, Subway Surfers, or any of those other games, I'm generally going to get toward the lower end of that screen on time, like four and a half hours, and you may have to juice it up. Um, and unfortunately, this does not support uh, fast charging in any way. Um, but uh, in general, I, I think most uh, users will be able to get through a full day of moderate use. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about an area where I definitely think the UmiDigi A3 Pro shines, and that is in the software department. So you can see a swipe up is going to bring us into our app drawer. If I pull down here from the bottom, that will get rid of the app drawer, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. A swipe over here into the left is going to give us in our Google feed, um, and then that's pretty much it. I don't have any other trays here uh, as far as my apps, but in terms of apps, we pretty much are running 100% stock Android. No bloatware here on the phone to mention, um, except apps apps that I've already added. And then in terms of the software, again, Android 8.1, um, with just a couple of very small tweaks that are very useful. So one of them being this overview home and back option. Um, so you've probably noticed that I've been using basically swipe gestures um, on the phone. And that's because it has right here in this overview home back option, there's that swipe up. Um, so swipe up, if you notice that when I turn that off, I do now have software options. Whereas if I turn it off, it's going to get rid of those. And then a swipe from the middle is going to be my home option. A swipe over here to the right is going to be my recent app. So we'll go back into that. And then a swipe over here from the left is going to be my back option. So now that I'm back here, notice that it is pretty much just stock Android. A couple of just other small exceptions here being, of course, we do have a fingerprint sensor, which I will mention does not work particularly well, um, but we do also have face unlock, which I've found actually face unlock to work a whole lot better than the fingerprint sensor. So other UmiDigi phones have a little bit better fingerprint sensors. This one is definitely not super accurate. So let's go ahead and test that real quick. So I turn the phone off, do one, two, three with my finger and it is very slow it's actually oh there we go i thought it was going to work there all right so it did work it took a couple tries uh, but now let's go ahead and try the face unlock so we'll go ahead and turn the screen off and then i'm going to turn it back on raise it up and that took about one second or a little bit less, but it was dead on accurate with the face unlock. Unfortunately, you can't use face unlock to, uh, you know, use secure payments or anything like that. But in terms of opening the phone, I found face unlock to work a whole lot better than the fingerprint sensor. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about these cameras. And I would argue that that is definitely an area where the A3 Pro struggles just a little bit. And uh, again, we have a 12 and five megapixel camera here on the rear. In terms of the front facing shooter, we have an eight megapixel camera. Um, and the reason I say that this phone struggles just a little bit in that area is because it's just not a whole lot of software options here. So we do have HDR mode. So for that low light photo, um, you're gonna do a little bit better if you do HDR, but in general, low light photos aren't the greatest with this phone. Um, but then in terms of our options, we basically just have panorama, normal, and then depth of focus. So that depth of focus option is going to blur out the background. So let's say I want to focus in on that pair of earbuds there. I can go ahead and take the picture. And what that's going to do is it's going to blur out the background. Um, but it's kind of weird because what this phone does is basically it just blurs out everything around, um, not necessarily 
focusing in on that one thing, it's just gonna blur out everything around it. So not really a true depth of focus like what you would get on other devices. So that's just a quick heads up. It does have the dual cameras, but they aren't necessarily the greatest. I wouldn't necessarily use that depth of focus option real often. Uh, and generally I just say take normal photos. Um, we do also have beauty mode, of course. Um, and so then we can adjust the beauty mode there. And then we do also have, of course, video. Um, in video, we're gonna take 1080p videos here. Um, we do have the flash option with the video. And then of course we can do uh, front facing videos as well. Um, if I go over here into our options, uh, you can see it's gonna go back into those. But one nice little option that it does have is electronic image stabilization. So while you're using the video, um, it is going to stabilize it uh, electronically. It's not the greatest electronic image stabilization to be completely honest, uh, but it is there available. So in terms of videos or sorry, photos that I've already taken, I'll just show you a couple of them just so you can kind of get a quick idea of what the photos look like. That was an accidental photo there, um, but you can see kind of a picture. That's a low light photo there, um, but there's a front facing camera shot there again it's not bad um, it's certainly usable um, and then there is a depth of focus picture there um, we're kind of getting some glare there um, but that's a picture of my blue yeti microphone and again it just kind of does a, uh, a depth of focus it's kind of weird because it basically just focuses on one area and then just blurs everything around it um, and then there's just a regular picture of the same thing so overall uh, camera quality it's going to do uh, for you know someone for a hundred dollars um, obviously for a first-time phone user especially a smartphone user it's going to be just fine but in general uh, very average pictures overall all right, so let's go ahead and conclude this video with a quick uh, just assessment of this phone overall. So um, first two areas, I want to go ahead and talk about the weaknesses. So number one, the processor is definitely not the fastest processor in the world. However, I think in general day-to-day -day uses, it's going to be just fine. Um, also, the cameras would be another area that I don't think are necessarily the greatest. But again, we're talking about a phone that's under $100, and I think it definitely holds its own in terms of unlocked phones um, under that $100 price point. In fact, I definitely think this is one of the best phones under $100 um, because it's very budget friendly. It looks really nice. Um, and overall, it's a very solid package for uh, but definitely a first time user or just as a backup phone because it works on AT&T, T-Mobile and Verizon again. So um, definitely a solid option if you're interested in checking it out. Um, again, in the links down below, um, you can check it out from gearbest.com. Also check out the links down below because uh, again, we are gonna be giving away an Umi Digi A3 Pro courtesy of gearbest.com. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has been helpful for you and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.